Alright guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Lexi and today I'm here with part two of the plus size readathon vlog. If you're new here, the plus size readathon is a readathon from the 1st to the 31st of July. I host it alongside Julie and Sasha. I'm currently filming this on Wednesday the 12th of July. So we are about halfway through the readathon. If you haven't seen the announcement video or the first vlog, go and watch those ones now to get all caught up. In the first vlog, I finished the first two books of the readathon. That was The Accidental Pinup and Shipwrecked, which is also our group book. In this vlog, I'll be continuing to read Lexi Let's Go as well as Act Your Age Eve Brown. I have started this one, I'm probably like 50 pages or so in, and I'm about 30% on Lexi Let's Go, but I have not yet started Out of the Blue. In this vlog, you'll also see me going on a carnival cruise for my birthday. It's my birthday on the 16th of July. I'm also going to see the Barbie movie with my friends, and yeah, I'm sure there's going to be lots of other fun adventures in this vlog. We actually leave for the cruise tomorrow, so come with me today to do a little bit of reading and let's jump straight into the vlog. Hello guys, welcome to the cruise section of this vlog. So as you can see, we hopped on board. We cruised from the 13th of July to the 16th of July on the Carnival Splendor. This is the boat that I've been on for the last two cruise vlogs. If you'd like to see more footage of the ship, head to those vlogs. I also had a balcony room for those vlogs, so if you'd like to see the differences, these are some of them. Personally, we felt that this room was bigger. I think it's because there was a wider gap between the beds and the beds were pushed up against the walls. But this time we definitely had a better bed situation. There was no lumpy bits this time around, which was fantastic. The room we stayed in was 7299, so deck 7 and room 299. I found this room to be pretty quiet. My mum could hear like the rocking of the ship and like a bit of shuddering. But overall there was no noise from like elevators or things happening on the boat, which is what you want. This time around we went with the set dining, we had the late time and this worked so so much better than the anytime dining. When we've had anytime dining we've waited anywhere from half an hour to two hours for our seating. I've never had that issue with any other cruise line, only carnival. On to the next day, so we did decide to get the VIP Cloud9 Spa packages. Because we had pretty much done everything on the boat, this was the only thing we hadn't done. I definitely recommend booking your spa things on the first day as they do offer embarkation sales. We ended up getting the access of the spa area, so the pool, the hot rooms, cold rooms, steam rooms, all of that for $184 for our stateroom. And the right price was $337, so that's a massive saving and we did really enjoy this. They did also quote us a discount for our treatments, so because we wanted treatments that were outside of the embarkation sales, instead of doing 10% off, 20% off and 30% off, they offered us 10, 10 and 20. This was fine, it's just when we did actually have the treatment, that's when they take the payment, so they would try to charge you the full amount. The girls would get really annoyed with you when you mentioned that the manager offered you a discount. Also be aware that in the spa for all treatments, they add an auto gratuity. 
which is something like $12 depending on the price. Just be super aware of the receipt. Always make sure you cross if you don't want to add an extra tip as well. I feel like they try to get away with just making up the prices and 100% that shouldn't be on. I ended up getting the hot stone massage for 150 instead of 180 and my mum got a pedicure and her hair done. Those two were supposed to be 10% off but again they tried to get away with not doing it. The hairdresser was just also really shady. My mum had booked with someone she had used on the previous cruise but this woman came along and just changed the booking and made it under herself. We told the manager we weren't impressed but there wasn't really anything they could do. But yeah, that was a 2 out of 10 experience on the cruise. With this cruise being held in July, they also had Grinchmas in July celebrations throughout. The Carnival cruise ship actually has a collaboration with Dr. Zeus, hence they have Grinchmas. And yeah, it was really cool. So they had a Let It Snow Day where the Grinch came out for a performance. And as he was singing Christmas carols, snow started to fall in the atrium. This was really cute and all the little kids that were there really loved it. If you do plan to go to one of these, 100% stand on the left because it did not snow on the right side, only the left side. They also had a lighting the tree ceremony thing, which was really cool. Here you will see me almost miss the clip, but I did catch it and it was a really cool thing to watch. It was really fun. They also had Christmas kids activities throughout the days as well. And it was really nice to see the boat all decorated for Christmas. When we went on the cruise that was after Christmas, but before New Year's, these same decorations were out. So it was really nice to see that again for our last time on Carnival Cruises. We got off the boat on the morning of the 16th of July, which was my birthday. I got off the cruise, headed home with mum, and then met up with Sam to spend the day with him. We went to the new Harry Hartog bookstore that has just opened in Penrith. It's got both old and new books, as well as a cafe that sells delicious food. I was so impressed. While I was there, I actually picked up Yellow Face, which is the book Jamie and I are hoping to read in August and have a meet up for. Then afterwards, we kept the Christmas in July vibes going by heading to Hillbilly Cider. We actually came here last year for Sam's birthday and we just loved it so much. It was so fun. It was actually a really cold day as well. It was a little bit gloomy weather, so that was even more Christmas in July vibes. It was just as good as last year. Here's a few clips of me actually heading into the office. I had an office day. Wow, work from home girly leaves the house. And now we're due for another update. Hello guys, so I'm back with an update on these two books, so Out of the Blue and Act Your Age, Eve Brown. So I am back from the cruise, I am now officially 27. But yeah, I had a fantastic birthday, I was super spoiled, I'm sure you guys probably saw my picture on my Instagram. And it is now Wednesday, so I've had a few days to just relax, do some reading. I do that. So I now have like 100 pages left of Act Your Age, Eve Brown. And this has been really fun, I definitely like Eve a lot more than I liked Danny but I don't like her as much as I liked Chloe. I really like that this book has had a lot of representation for different things, not just being plus size. This book also talks about autism and being more aware of the neurodiverse space. Slay! The romance has been really fun and he is definitely an interesting character. I'm now at the point where they're not together, they obviously should be together, so they have to work through this conflict and get together. For Out of the Blue, I am up to page 69. No more saying cuss words, guys! It's inappropriate and violent! 
There is definitely a lot more like world building and lore and stuff like that that we've learnt about the Mer in this world. One element that I thought was really cool and different was that the Mer people don't like assign gender, like they're just very like fluid with that stuff. The Mer person in this book sort of just like brings all those different attitudes to the world and it's very cool so far. Obviously I have quite a lot to go with this one. I'm really liking it though and I'm looking forward to reading more. It's really catchy and fun. I have not made any more progress on Lexi Let's Go. I am literally terrible with trying to read on my phone. Every time I open it, I just get distracted. I think that's where like the Kindle comes in handy. People that read on a Kindle, it must be just easier because there's no phone distractions. I've never tried a Kindle, but let me know in the comments if that would help me with reading ebooks. My camera battery is flashing at me, so I'm gonna leave this update here and do some more reading. Then I will be back with another update soon. So today is Saturday the 22nd of July. I literally have five minutes before I'm about to run and pick up one of my friends to go see the Barbie movie. As you can see, I'm dressed very on theme. I will give you a little outfit of the day as well. I thought I'd do a quick outfit of the day before we head to the Barbie movie. So I have this like high neck black skivvy from Target. I've got my Barbie vest from Dotty. This is part of the new collection, so they still should have some. I've got my fake Louis from Cypress. We've got some Pandoras. Then I've just got my black jeans and I just did white sneakers. For makeup, I don't know if you can notice, but I've done like pink eyeshadow underneath and then a pink lip, of course. Oh, I like a little edge and a little pop in my hair, so I wanted to add something different, especially for the Teen Vogue party. But the reason I wanted to quickly pop on here was to say I finished Act Your Age Eve Brown. As I said in the previous updates, this was so fun. I really loved Eve and the boyfriend was pretty cute too. I think I mentioned also last time that there is some autism rap in this. We do get a little bit more and it's done very well. It's very sweet. And I think it would help a lot of adults who are sort of coming to terms with their diagnosis. I feel like this one was like a little bit more spicy than the other books. So on that scale, I'd probably give it like a two and a half to three. And overall for star rating, I think I wanna give this one a three. So a three is good, like I enjoyed it. I don't think I would gravitate to reading it again, but I would recommend it to others. And yeah, of course I had a fun time with it. That is it from me for now. So I'm gonna to go to this Barbie movie and I will talk to you guys later. Twenty-four hours later. Hello guys, so it is the next day, it is Sunday, and on this day we went out to celebrate Sam's birthday. We decided to go into the city to the National Maritime Museum. We decided to go because they have this exhibition called Brick Rex, which is basically massive Lego displays of ships and like maritime things. <laughs> As you can see in the clips, there is just such a wide range of things. They were like interactive. There was a few things that had games attached to them. I was really excited to see the Titanic displays. I used to be really, really obsessed with the Titanic. I also had a really fun time trying to spot mermaids and fun things like that in the Lego displays. 
We did have a look around at the rest of the museum too and there's some really awesome things happening there at the moment. I would definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't been for a while. Outside the museum you also have the opportunity to go on board some of the boats that are docked there. We decided to take a look around the HMAS Vampire. <laughs> This experience was not built for Sam. Hello. <laughs> this was a really cool experience. There was a lot to see. As you just heard though, it is quite squishy. So for all the tall people out there, just be aware of that before you get on. You literally could see inside all of the different areas. You could see inside all the different areas, which was really cool. Everything was obviously like 60s and 70s style, which was interesting to see as well. We had such a fun time just exploring the ship. Oh my god, we're on our boat! <laughs> we also went on to the Endeavour, which I believe is the ship that founded Australia. This one definitely gives you like pirate ship vibes. You could also go down below on this ship, but they had advised us it was a bit squishier than the other boat, so we decided to stay on the deck. After a really awesome day, we had some drinks, then we headed to Blackbird Cafe for some dinner. This restaurant is so nice and you get a really pretty view of the harbour when you sit outside as well. Because it is winter, we did also get to see an early sunset, which was really lovely. So this is us enjoying the view, ordering some entrees and some dinner. We had a big day, so we were really happy to have like a nice hearty meal. After dinner, we took a little stroll around the harbour, back to our car, and yeah, it was a fantastic day out. Hello guys, so I'm back with another update for this vlog. I believe this is the final update. Today is Friday the 28th of July, and I don't think I'm going to get any more reading done this month. Unfortunately, that does mean I am admitting defeat. I am not going to finish Out of the Blue, and I'm not going to finish Lexi Let's Go. I honestly just feel a little bit plus size readathoned out. In the last week, I have finished this Get In My Swamp Shrek Smart. Look out, princess. Here comes the new me. And I've read 300 pages of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Literally every day and night, I've been like, yep. Yeah, Okay, gonna read more of the plus size readathon because it's coming up, the end is near, and every day I just choose a different book. I am enjoying those books, don't get me wrong, I really do want to read Out of the Blue, and as I was saying earlier, I just, I'm, I'm not gonna read the ebook. I say it every time when I get one that this is it, I'm gonna be an ebook girly. Why the fuck you lying? And I just don't do it. These books? Fantastic. I honestly wish I was filming a reading vlog for this book. I have been loving this so much. Look at all those tabs, like having the best time. And holy shit, this was funny. Like this was such a fun time. I read this in like two sittings. In total, I finished three books for the Plus Size Readathon. I had a fantastic time seeing what you guys were reading. So, so many of you joined us this year and it was fantastic. Keep an eye out because I think the next thing we do will probably be October. Last year we ran like a quick one week readathon to coincide with the US day of like plus size appreciation. The best way to be up to date is to follow the plus size readathon Instagram account. That is where all of the news hits first. So that's it from me. The next videos you'll probably see from me will be like my Europe trip. So I'm really keen to get back into editing those. And I look forward to doing another readathon with you guys soon. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will speak to you in the next video. Bye.